Love is in the air this February. Spoiler alert, it's not just any book club. You're listening to Bookends. Bookends, the show the that should have been called Off the Books, but it's yeah. not. Instead, it's called Bookends, the show not about books. I wish we could retcon the, our, the name of our side show, but we can't. Yeah. This so is the second time we're naming it. <laughs> Book bookends. This is it. That's it. That's bookends. That's the show. Okay. I can't believe it's not <laughs> literature. Um. So this month, uh, because it's February, and because we record these in advance, so we don't know. We didn't know uh, what the. We were uh, supposed to not know. We were supposed to not know because we were supposed to record this more in advance. But um, we picked ahead of time the apartment, which is a classic. Uh, call it romantic comedy, I, I suppose. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot funnier than what I remember it being a lot funnier, but this, this was not the case because I remember how, now watching it again. I just remember how dark it was. And yeah, by the way, I am Justin, your your host here on Not Just Any Book Club. Pierce, your your other host. Uh, hello, hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So so uh, Justin has seen this many times because he's seen every movie ever every made. Movie ever made. Can't and he that. and he he does really like this movie, uh, and this was my first time watching it. And I honestly, I'm gonna be honest here for a second. I was putting it off a little bit because I didn't think I was gonna like this movie very much. Yeah. Uh, and then I and then I really enjoyed it. It took a <gasps> minute. It took a minute for me to get into it, but I really okay. enjoyed it after after a while. Yeah, because uh, I was kind of worried because I'm like, ooh, maybe this might be a little bit too, you know, pulling on the heartstring for Pierce because you no. know he's just a hard and grizzled man. But yep. Hey, he's a little bit of a teddy bear on the inside too. Wow, I'm I'm, I'm glad all of our listeners know that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I guess we're gonna be summarizing the movie. Um, yes. Yeah. I can. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Do so, that. Uh, C. C. Baxter, uh, he's a he's kind of a lowly corporate worker uh, in New York. Uh, but to climb the corporate ladder, what he's been doing, he's been getting up to no good. Uh, he's letting, uh, it's four, four of his managers. Four or five, um, I don't know. Yeah, four, four of them, four or five of them to take turns using his very nice apartment, uh, in the Upper West Side, um, to take women, uh, to, to an empty apartment. For adultery. adultery. Yes. For adulterous purposes, you know they got wives, but they want to they want to do some Have extracurricular fun. activity. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he's 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 constantly kind of juggling this this schedule, uh, trying to get them to um, get, put in a good word for him to to the boss, so that way he can climb that ladder. Uh, and eventually they do, and um, the boss the man sheldrake. The, the sheldrake he he's he he knows a thing or two about this he knows what's going on he's seen this before he knows that he's letting people use his apartment um doesn't he doesn't he call him directly out on that or am i am i mistaken? yeah no he like he um he starts to really imply it's like man you're gonna be in trouble for you know finagling your way up here but then it was like give me that key like, yeah yeah then he, then he was like then he was like listen <laughs> Give me, <laughs> give me the key. You're a smart guy. Um, oh yeah, because because he doesn't he doesn't really get it at first, and then and then yeah. he's like, I thought I thought you were a smart guy. That's what all of the all the managers have been saying. Mm. Um, and so he Sheldrake, this is important. Sheldrake gives him two uh, tickets to a show uh, for that man. evening. The Music Man uh, and. Mr. Uh, Mr. Baxter over there asks his crush, uh, the elevator woman, um, what was her name? I had it written down. Uh, Where did it go? Miss, Miss Kubelik. Miss Kubelik. Um, she agrees to go. She has, but she says that she has a date that night. And so, or, or she's going to see a man. She doesn't call it a date. Um, and she goes to that. Dun, dun, dun. We find out it's Mr. Sheldrake. Um, that is the woman that he is 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 adultering with, <laughs> and bringing to this apartment, and uh, so she skips out on um, CC Baxter for Mister Sheldrake because he convinces her to go with him. Um, 
And then Take she, yeah, I, I have notes in front of me. Uh, Mr. Baxter gets gets upset that she stood him up, uh, and then some some other stuff happens. Um, that basically is like I like it, it. It pretty much is. He's like upset, and then he finds out that it's Mr. Sheldrake, and then like some other like it's. I feel like this middle bit of the movie is like I was getting invested, um, and I want to leave that for you. Honestly, like it's not it's not vitally important to me saying the plot right now, but it is good. It's good. Okay. Um, so yeah, some other stuff happens during that. Uh, Mr. Baxter finds out that the Miss Kuberlick was the um, was the was the woman that Mr. Sheldrake took. Um, he does this thing at a party um, where hat. he oh the the way he finds out that's what I was thinking of yeah where where he the mirror. The mirror. yeah. He returns the mirror to to Mr. Sheldrake, and then Mr. Sheldrake's like, "Okay, I'll give it to her." Uh, and then he sees that Miss Kubrick has it later, uh, which yeah. is a really really cool thing, really interesting. Um, eventually, Mr. Sheldrake kind of uh, pushes um, pushes Mr. Baxter into letting him use the apartment again, even though Mr. Baxter doesn't want him to, uh, and. He has a fight. Mr. Sheldrake gets Miss Kuberlick there, and then they have a fight, uh, and she t- tries to overdose on sleeping pills mm. uh, purposefully um, after Mr. Sheldrake leaves. Uh, and so, you know, Mr. Baxter comes home the, the, in the morning, and uh, he finds that uh, that he's got Miss Kuberlick in his bed. Some trouble. Uh, Sleeping. Yep. So he goes next door. He gets his doctor. They they get her all. They get her set up. The doctor is extremely Jewish. By the way, that <laughs> thick accent. Yeah. Um. And uh. Yeah. They they get her going. Um. They get her back to normal. But she she recovers for like a few days in his in his apartment. And they kind of they build build their relationship back up from where they were. Where Bax was angry at her for standing him up and everything. Mm. Um. And you know they they realize they have some some feelings for each other basically, um, but then eventually her brother Miss Kubelik's family is looking for her. her brother shows up, um, and and so uh, really aggressive. <laughs> yeah, there is there is some some hijinks ensue where basically uh, his all of his neighbors think that he's the one bringing all the women home. Um, so one of his neighbors, it was the doctor, wasn't it? Um, yeah. one of his, one of his neighbors basically comes in and he's like, what's going on here? And he, he kind of spills the beans about how everyone in the apartment building thinks that he's like this one, that, uh, Mr. Baxter is like this yeah. womanizer. Uh, and, uh, her brother punches him in the face and he's like, didn't even hurt, didn't hurt a bit. Cause he's like love. so in love. Yeah. Um, Love. And Love. then, then Love. what happens next? What happens next? Uh, I'm looking through my notes. Um, he's in love. He's, he's too awesome. He's in love. To, like, yep. Um, <laughs> Dies from a coma. <laughs> and then basically, um, you watched this movie. I swear. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I, I. I. There's. Listen. I'm. I'm getting. There's a part between this and the ending, and I'm like, we watched this movie a while ago. I, I should say that. Um, we took we took a while to actually get to <laughs> recording this episode. Um, Sh- Sheldrake gives him like an a- even higher position, right? He, he yeah, gives yeah. him up to like the the front like, office, like yeah. the office next to him, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and he also gives him a key to the executive washroom. Um, Wait, you're just gonna explain it like that. I am. I am. No, no, I am. He's, he gives him the key to the executive washroom. And so, um, you know, he's, but, but Mr. Baxter is trying to do his job. He's an upstanding citizen. He's just trying to do his job. Uh, and then Mr. Sheldrick expects him to give out his key again to the apartment because uh, Mr. Sheldrick is divorcing his wife in favor of getting together permanently with Miss Kubrick. Because the secretary snitched. Yeah, because the secretary snitched. Um 
And so he he's expecting him to do this, and they they have a bit of a fight, um, and then eventually he's like, "Fine, here's the key." Uh, and then he goes into the next room, uh, and he's looking at it. Uh, Mister Soldrake is looking at it, and he's like, "This is the key to the executive washroom." And uh, Mister Baxter quits right there because um, it's all washed up. Yep, his words, <laughs> and. Uh, he goes home and he's packing to just leave to go basically start a new life elsewhere. And uh, uh, Miss Kuberlick out at dinner with Mr. Sheldrake to celebrate the new year. Uh, this is a Christmas movie, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, a New Year's movie, too. Yeah, Christmas, a holidays movie. Um, uh, they're celebrating the new year, uh, and but. Um, Miss Kubrick finds out that instead of giving the apartment key to Mr. Sheldrake, he instead quit. Um, she, she, after finding this out, she gets up and she leaves the bar and she goes as fast as she can to the apartment. Um, hey, that's the title. Yeah, that's the title. And, uh, and she, she, she hears what, what she thinks is a gunshot and it's him popping champagne for the new year. Uh, and so she's like banging on the door and he opens it and then they're like talking and he's like, I don't know where I'll go, I'll, I'm, 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 but I'm going to leave. I got to get out of here. Um, and she's like, well, before you go, we got to finish our game of gin rummy. So they sit down and they play cards and they're like, it, it was really funny to me. They're like, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> they're dealing the cards and they're both looking at each other. So they're like, it's like all over the place. Yeah. Cause they're just like staring into each other's eyes. I, I was like, that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, I'm pretty sure they drop some cards off the table while they're doing that. If that I remember even... correctly. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Nice little detail there that I didn't even notice that I've seen this movie three times. Wow. <laughs> all wow. right. And you can't forget the final line here. Um, after Buddy declares his love for her, she just says, shut up and deal. Roll credits. Yep. Great way to end the movie. Yep. All right. So I already kind of gave my my opinion a little bit. I I, I didn't think I was going to really enjoy it coming into it. Um, and in the beginning, I was intrigued. And then it grew on me. And then by and then- <laughs> by the latter half, I was I was invested. And I was into it. Dope. So. Yeah. Well, my first um, time watching this movie, I, um, I I was a big Billy Wilder fan anyways. I really love Sub Like It Hot. I love Double Indemnity. And I, I, I like Sunset Boulevard. A little less than other people. But this was the movie that kind of struck me odd man out because like a rom-com. How good that could that be? Yeah, like like we said, Justin's seen every movie ever made. Every yeah, I, I'm just <laughs> like casually laying. Down Listen, if, knowledge. If, if 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 any of I know, we probably have like some people who know a lot about movies in our audience. But if you're just as lost as I am, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's yeah, why well, I'm here. That's the whole reason. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, he's here to ask questions. I'm the I'm the common man in this situation. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, Billy Wilder was this director. Um. He's this Jewish director from. I think Germany, I think. So, you know, props to him coming to America at this time and like making a bunch of hit films, hit after hit. And, um, oh, especially during around this time, this was when the Hayes Code was on its way out, but still in full effect. And like basically films had to follow a moral standard. Um, And the biggest part is that you cannot have a film about adultery because, you know, that's a no-no and that's against our moral standards of America. So this movie was kind of, you know, kind of revolutionary because it kind of addressed this one topic that you were not supposed to address in film, adultery, and uh, among one of the myriad of topics. But um, for this to win Best Picture and a bunch of other Oscars is awesome. But that's besides the point. Um, my first time watching this movie... Um, I really enjoyed it um, a lot more than I thought it would. I actually hated Sheldrake so much that I just wanted to like eviscerate him every time I saw him on screen. Just like I was biting my nails at the end. I was really wanting Buddy and Kubrick to get together so bad. I was almost yelling. At me. I was actually yelling at my screen because like this is the this is probably the most I've ever been like invested mm-hmm. in any on screen romance ever. Sh- so. Sheldrake was certainly like, I like it's not it's not really his fault. Um, the situation that happened with Buddy, and I think that's that's kind of um, the, a, a bit of the beauty of it. But uh, he certainly um, 
he certainly doesn't make it seem like like the adultery thing is bad enough but then he's like all smug about it and it's yeah uh, oh, no, what is it like in the apartment with um with cuba like is like oh man uh fr- uh frank cuba like was that her name fran yeah fran yes yeah, so yeah, okay was fran. fran it was like fran quit whining about it just we- we'll get it um i don't want to be seen in public with you yet but don't worry don't worry yeah you'll become my wife a little bit later on I I really want to do Borat. what a great Borat reference. <laughs> I know. Just throw it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um he just completely dismisses her emotionally. Um just basically objectifies her like every single man in the office. Like basic um like in the like the first time we meet her, um there's this one guy that just like slaps her on the butt and basically Cuba like just starts yelling at her, but you know, there's no reprimands, no um repercussions for him because he's just the superior man in the situation and it's kind of like um i think it's like a commentary on office workplace culture in general like where how sometimes people can just be like you know disregarding um just emotions in general and just like looking you looking at you as a number um and that's even evident in the um the beginning of the movie where like i i'm usually not a fan of voiceovers in the beginning of the movie just to really exposition but here um, we just see, we just hear Buddy like start talking about numbers. Like there are four thousand people, uh, four hundred thousand people in New York right now. If you leave them, like back back, they're ten times larger. Th- I'm making up statistics. Don't quote me on yeah. that. <laughs> I don't remember what exactly what he said, but it's supposed to make you feel cold and dry, and like you're just another number. And he's obsessed with numbers. Um, what did you think about the romance, Pierce? Did you really want them to get together? Uh, or yeah. Buddy and Kubelik? Yeah, I, I did. I um, I don't know. It, it, there there was there was a time not when I was rooting for for Sheldrake and um, and Kubelik, but I think I liked Kubelik more than I liked Buddy mm. uh, personally. So I just I kind of wanted just whatever whatever was gonna be good for her i didn't like shell drake i obviously i preferred if she got with buddy but um but <laughs> if 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 shell drake like had div- obviously this would probably wouldn't be what would happen in this movie but yeah. if if shell drake had divorced his wife and she got she stayed with him i would have been fine with that but uh because i pref- i preferred her character over buddies but um but I'm, I'm happy with the way it ended and how they yeah. they, they got together that that was that was the preferred ending. So yeah. Okay. He doesn't write movies. I just, if you guys didn't like that ending, we got the actual. Ending. I listen. I'm. I said what my preferred ending yeah, I know, was. No, no. I, just said, I just said that like that. I would. <laughs> I would have been. I would have been okay with that because she would have been okay with that. I okay. Well, difference of opinion there. Because I <laughs> like. I because like. I was like. Oh. Of the do you do you, do you think that do you think that over time she would have been less okay with it even if he probably like, because um he, he had a history of just like cheating with other people having flings over the summer um they that's, all failed that's yeah. true so if you don't know i i suppose i suppose my my assumption there is that it's in like the most ideal where he like divorces his wife and gets with her and is like faithful to her mm-hmm. um if 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 you know if in what would probably happen if that if that were to happen then uh, then yeah. obviously uh, there's an obvious like preference away from that so <laughs> okay um so to pivot back to what other things i love about this film um i love billy wilder's dialogue um i think his dialogue is very punchy it's very straight to the point but it's also um witty without being without begging for a laugh it's like it feels all natural and there's a sense of verisimilitude to it. Like these are things that people would say. Um, and I that's what I really love about this movie. Um, like how every single line is either um foreshadowing. Like at the beginning they bring up the what is it? They bring up the the washroom key, like all the way at the beginning of the film when he's just calling a bunch of people. And um that that wasn't something I noticed until like a couple watches later. I was like, Oh, hey, look at that. Um and every joke just feels natural and in line with the character um there are no showstoppers with every single joke oh we're about to say yeah something. I, well i i think i think to to go along with what you were saying about how it, it feels very natural it feels very real like there are there are jokes that are like uh you know you should you, this is very funny but like uh, there's a ton of jokes in there that are just like 
one line comments that um, that are very like dry humor. Um, yeah. They're very much a dry form of humor, which is kind of what how people talk in real life. Not every joke that people tell is like, oh, you should laugh at this. It's so funny. Ha ha. It's like, yeah. oh, here's just a little funny comment into our conversation. And there's exactly. there's lots of that in the in the movie. What do you say about the humor still holds up today? Like if they released it, it would be like a, like, you know, uh, a modern <laughs> at the box office. If, if they release if they released it today, I think that like they would have to do are you asking if the movie or the humor still holds up today? Well, okay, first the humor. The humor, um, I think some of it does, some of it doesn't. I think like some of it is like jokes that are beholden to the time, but some of it, some of it definitely does. Um, I think, okay. I think probably more than half of it definitely does hold okay. up. Um, the movie itself, I, I think, de- almost definitely does. Like I, I think that you would have to change some details, obviously. Yeah, but the movie's but, surprisingly modern, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It it feels like a modern movie that you can just like slap a black and white filter on mm-hmm. it, and maybe change around some technology. But like it's yeah, you would have to today. you would have to change around some technology, change around the way the offices are set up and stuff. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking of which, it was a black and white filter, or not a black and white filter. This this was way past um you know black and white being in, in its prime this was mm-hmm. actually the last black and white film to be nominated up until Shin's list in 1998 1998 something like I that it was 1999 i think don't quote us on that yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um basically um he didn't intentionally um in black and white uh, for stylization um i think like post 50s like the 40s were the, the decade of black and white 50s were like the age of technicolor where you know it was actually popular to do popular and i think even cheaper to do color films uh, mm-hmm. so here it what do you think they would do it for black and white intentionally for what do you mean sorry like <laughs> what do you think um why do you think it was an intentional choice to make a black and white um that's interesting i had not thought about that because i just knew this is an old movie so i was just like yeah. maybe it is just black yeah um i guess i guess i don't know in my head i'm going for something kind of like kind of like not like cliche but like cliche now where it's like oh it's like our story is old as time it's like love and whatever and i don't know <laughs> yeah no i don't know like that's that's the only thing i can think of i really have no idea to be honest no. with you <laughs> sorry about that everybody technical difficulties um hey, but out of perfect all right so where were we <laughs> all right so i mean there isn't a general consensus at, or an official reason as to why he intentionally shot in black and white after um you know it was on its way out and it was considered unfashionable to do it but the reason why he actually did it was because or the reason why i interpret it is um that it's black and white to suck out most of the joy out of like you know out of christmas and out of new year's it's supposed to be kind of dreary and even though everybody's really happy um they're kind of you know sad and um, but I also think um, it's also to make it more "quote unquote" boring and make everybody look the same. Like in the office, um, it's just this huge sprawling office where it's just black and white. There's no different colors, no different shades of gray. It's black and lesser black than just yeah. a wide sea. So that is my interpretation of it. Of it. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense than what I said. Tales so. all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I beauty and the bees. Listen. I I had no idea. I didn't like I said I didn't even think about that. So hmm. cuz I don't really know exactly when uh when when black and white went out of fashion. Well, now you know. Yes. Well, I I, I do I know. Do I know exactly yeah, I mean, when? It's I I mean I don't know the exact year because you know trends don't die right. in an instant, but it was right. somewhere around the 1950s. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I also love about um, this movie is like about the writing specifically about in this movie is like how tight the plot is. Um, and here's something that I was I think I'm the only one to point this out. And this is the new discovery about this movie. Um, like for example, Buddy's cold at the beginning when he um, walks out, and um, you know um, <clears throat> because he at the beginning of the movie this is to introduce the fact that he's like renting out and selling out his apartment for other people. Um, he decides to sleep um, outside, and 
then the next day it gets him a cold and this starts off like an almost like a rube goldberg of just um of, of just plot development because the, the buddy's cold does like four or five things at once one it shows like how dedicated he is to the job because that he's willing to get a cold and being able to sleep in central park Two, it also allows um buddy to have a conversation with fran and um which basically just sets off like um it shows the audience that he may or may not have some feelings for her three um it um it, his illness causes him to request to move the date um they use his apartment because he's busy that day which is also the film's way of like introducing all of the players in the story uh, as in like hey are you free and i oh, man let me go check the other guy so that's also that four it also uses a joke to um express his shock when um sheldrake tries to you know ask him hey man are you are you do you want to give me that apartment? And five, it's also um, it it also is to show that he's bewildered when um he gets the ticket and gets hinted at a promotion as he like tries to stuff the tissues, just to show him that, like he's maybe a little bit more disorganized than you think. And that's just one plot. That's just one um, plot. Point, one which, detail. One little yeah. detail just sets off a bunch of other stuff, which is really cool. Um, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, write that in your uh film essays or whatever <laughs> put uh, that put that in your video essay yeah cite not just any book club yep. in your phd paper <laughs> <laughs> yeah um what else do i want to say about this movie um oh yeah and also throughout this movie it's also peppered with like subtle running gags one of the running gags that's been advertised throughout the entire movie uh through the movie's marketing is like how they put the word wise at the end it's like otherwise wise demonstration wise again it's like it fits so naturally in the world that you don't really pick it up but like he almost has this um with uh what is it something like it hot where he talks about type o blood in random conversations i, I it's 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 cool to me at least I don't, I don't know about my podcast listeners but i hope you find it cool too um and yeah well, what else uh, what do you think about the ending uh, I mean, I like it. it. It it left it ambiguous as to what was going to happen next. Um, as as in like not as in like obviously they were gonna like get together or whatever. But I like, I mean like where they were gonna go, what they were gonna do, that they were gonna like go start a new life somewhere together. Yeah, I like that. Um, I left it open ended. Yeah, like I, I I feel like some 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 movies really do need like kind of a this is the end but like it's an epilogue <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> but 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 for this movie for especially for love stories i feel like the idea the thought of two lovers going off into the sunset is a lot more endearing than actually seeing it your mind kind of fills in a lot yeah. of the blanks with your own experiences and what you think love is and all that so i think this is the best way to do it yeah, Buddy and Kubla could get divorced immediately, get married oh and my, divorced immediately after this. Oh my god. <laughs> the canon storyline. Um yep. yeah, in my head. Of uh, I just brought that up because I, I usually always like Billy Wilder's endings because they always have a very impactful final line that really sums up like what you're supposed to feel. Um but I I'm looking through all my notes here and there there are lots of other um subtle things like people like how um buddy and how do i say this like throughout the corporate world they just they call each other by the last names they call each other mr and mrs um or, or miss in this case they use nicknames they almost never really refer to each other by the first names um and they call him buddy um cc baxter buddy because they don't want to learn his first name because it's like they just see him as an asset or mm -hmm. a tool rather than an actual human being which also a really cool detail right yeah. there that they're yeah. that both both of the uh main characters um who are supposed to like get together are dehumanized throughout the movie yeah even not the <laughs> yeah by the corporate overlords yep um yeah and then and this movie was also inspired by another one of my favorite movies close encounters um i don't think this detail is really important so let's skip over this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like yeah, this I'm was inspired gonna... by this other movie but uh, whatever don't it was don't fun. get me started on another movie we're gonna be talking about that one as well just for another nine hours Oh um God. yeah okay um also are you surprised to know that there's no improv in this movie at all um None? They, they yeah they had to do like a um an elevator scene that elevator scene like 
60, or I'm putting my note 60, so 60 times, uh, because they missed one minor word, um, because I think it was like, she said will instead of won't, or something like that, so, mm-hmm. Um, he usually wasn't always a perfectionist like this, but uh, or Billy Wilder wasn't. But like for this movie, he was strangely peculiar about like how exact people are going to be writing up, uh, saying his lines. Um, like what is it? He made someone do um a scene. Um, you remember how that woman goes? Poor Nikki, he's kind of like a little Chihuahua. <laughs> but instead, um, Billy Wilder goes, "No, it's it's poor Nikki. He's like." A little chihuahua and said kind of like little chihuahua subtle differences um and i really hate the, i'm just scrolling through my notes but like <laughs> that's where my notes end um oh but i do have a story about like how this movie is um how billy wilder kind of like brought this movie up in different w- parts of the world um in east berlin um this movie is passed around in east berlin um and wilder whoever like um, he showed this movie to um, East Berlin was the communist country, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So basically um, they went up to um, Billy Wilder and they're like, thank you for making a movie that aligns with our politics and is a combination of Western capitalism, which destroys the interpersonal relationships and between people and their humanity. So Billy Wilder, you know, growing up very familiar with um, what World War II was like in Europe and, you know, communism. He goes, thank you. This movie could happen anywhere in Paris, Hong Kong, etc. But the one place this couldn't happen is Moscow. And the crowd applauds because they're like, yeah, good, good. Because in Moscow, no one owns their own apartment, which is a savage line by him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, then after he gives a speech and um, that goes up to them and and he says, Hey, we will give you the rights to this movie if you make a documentary about the Hitler-Stalin non-aggression pact that started World War II. That he's your favorite dark director already. Oh my god. <laughs> what a savage. <laughs> yeah, and he was always kind of a rude guy, but like he was not going to be taking anything about, you know, communism. He so, wasn't going to take anything. He wasn't going to take the, the communist saying that this movie was like a per. It was like, oh, it was like a complete... <laughs> Um, complete agreement with 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 communist principles. Yeah. He was like, "No, I yeah. will not have that." And I feel like I feel like I've said my say. I, I don't think I've said um, anything that was not on my notes. So, <laughs> do you guys? Do, do you guys? Do do you? Do me? Do you? Do you have anything else to say? Any? Uh no, I mean I mean you you pretty you pretty much covered it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um no, it was really enjoyable. Um, I I guess the one thing I will say is uh I I think it is worth the watch even if you even if you decided to listen to this episode without having watched the movie, which I get I get that yeah. I've done that sometimes. Um, oh, okay. Not not our show. I mean <laughs> like I mean like I've listened to podcasts where they talk about movies and not. And I like I didn't watch the movie. Um, Let me summarize it. I, I I get it. I get it. But I do think it is worth worth the watch, uh, regardless, yeah. even knowing the plot. Um, it, this it's, is my go to movie to recommend to someone like that has never seen a classic movie in their life because like this has all the familiar tropes of like a romance of you know the rom coms that we know today. And like, hey, if you want to get started with classic film, start here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so what you're saying is you made me watch um, Citizen Kane first, Kane. and that was yeah, which is the mo- which is like the number one movie people say don't watch this first. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's not that like hard to understand because I've seen movies that are like yeah, you probably shouldn't start here. Yeah, there there were times when I was like a little lost when I first watched it because that order. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, watch this movie. Is is Please. is all I was trying to say. It's I watch it. I'm trying to watch it every New Year's. And if you're listening to this, you should be rating this five stars on wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I don't know where. Other... And also follow us on that platform as well. On that platform, yeah. Also on follow us on Twitter at not just any pod where I tweet memes all day long and 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 you get to vote in the poll at the end of every month for the following month's topic. 
Yeah. And tune in next week when we uh, talk about whatever we're supposed to be reading for in between the chapters for this month, which is sociology and anthropology. Whatever that may be, we don't know. I yeah, we usually read short stories. I don't. I have no idea. What, are we just gonna read like a paper? Like, what we, are we gonna do? We didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, we did not. That's a bridge we're gonna cross when we get there. Yeah, Uh-oh. maybe maybe we'll just read something nonfiction and call it a day. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you'll, you'll 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 see it when you see it. <laughs> I hope hopefully we'll, you'll see it by next week. Yeah. Uh, any last words? Because goodbye, wise Prometheus. Oh, I messed it up. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. That's it. It's over. All right. See you guys next week. (laughs) Bye bye. (laughs) It's supposed to be goodbye, Prometheus wise. Goodbye, wise Prometheus.